the customer is going to be much happier now that they have some ice. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Today we're working on a hoses off the ice machine and this is an interesting problem. So when I got here the customer said the machine wasn't working. They have really no ice until I got it running. When I got here though, that switch was off. That's the power switch. Now, you know, it would have been just as easy to say, hey, you guys had the switch off, but you know, I started asking them questions and confirmed that it, it's been an issue for the last couple days and they have heard it running, but just they have seen ice in there, just very little ice, very small, you know, just very little ice. So not necessarily small cubes, just low production. So I'm racking my brain here because when I walked up, it wasn't off on a safety limit. If it was off on a safety limit, then that would indicate things. But whatever's happening, the board isn't catching it and it's not locking itself out. Because if there's long freeze, long harvest, it locks itself out and gives you an audible beep until you reset it. So I'm watching the machine operate and I decide to go ahead and put some service gauges on it. And this is about where I found it. But when I put the gauges on there, I'm a little concerned about that head pressure because it's still cool outside. I want to say it's like 75 degrees or something like that. I just wouldn't expect to see higher than 300 head pressure at the moment. Now later in the day, yeah, but not right now. So that took me up onto the roof and I'm going to take you guys up there and show you what I found. Okay, we have a common rack here. So this houses all the compressors for all the refrigeration equipment. And they're also using this condenser for the ice machine, which you can do. Hoshizaki is very open to people using their own condensers. But I noticed something that two of the condenser fan motors aren't running. So, okay, what's going on with that, you know? You've got two thermostats right here. And both of these thermostats have different temperatures at which it turns on condenser fan motors, okay? Kind of like fan cycling, okay? It is really. And what it's doing is it's using temperature instead of pressure because it's a common rack. So if you notice the way they have it set up, one thermostat turns on condenser fan motors at 80 degrees. One thermostat turns on condenser fan motors at 100 degrees. It's 94 degrees here right now. I don't know if you heard it when I hit it. Okay. So that one's ranging at 80 degrees. Let's see where this one's ranging. This one's turning on and off at 50 degrees. So we have a bad thermostat right here. And then this right here is working, but it's a little messed up too. Notice that it's turning on and off at 80 when we're sensing 95 degrees right now. So we've got mechanical bulbs sitting right here. So we're gonna go ahead and replace these thermostats all the condensed fan motors are running now. So we're gonna replace these thermostats and we're gonna put in something different probably. I'm probably gonna go with digital and I'll mount the sensing bulbs through the bottom of the cabinet or something down here. That way they can actually sense outdoor ambient. Um, I don't know that this is the only problem, okay? But I'm trying to investigate again, the machine, once I turned that switch on, it made a batch of ice in like 25 minutes. So it was cool. I didn't put my gauges on it then, okay? After the first batch, I decided, hey, I'm gonna put my service gauges on here because I couldn't see what was wrong. Then I noticed, hey, that head pressure is just a little bit higher than what I'd expect it to be. And I come up here and find the condenser fan motor issue. So I don't know that this is the only issue, but I know that this is one thing. What's interesting though, is they weren't complaining about their walk-in freezer and walk-in coolers and all their refrigeration equipment because that is also on the same common rack. And if the condenser fan motors aren't running, I would expect those things would be going off on high head pressure also. So they may not have just seen that issue. I don't know, interesting, huh? All right, I went ahead and powered it down so that way we can do the full repair. Uh, my unit disconnects right here, so I've already confirmed we're dead. Um, I've been picking up parts and stuff. The ice machine's made ice like two times since I've been gone, so I'm pretty confident this is the issue with the ice machine, so. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go back with some digital controls. So we're gonna redo some stuff, move some stuff. All right, I'm going back in with some uh, Pen A421 or Johnson controls. Um, I'm mainly using this control because of the size. It's a rather small control. I can mount them right here. Uh, the Ronco controls take up a little more space. Uh, I'd rather use the digital because you can actually, you know, not have to guesstimate on the accuracy. 
Um, and you can actually do offsets in these things too, if I remember right. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna go back in there and then we'll run the sensors down here, and, you know, have them out in the elements, that way we can get an accurate outdoor air temperature. All right, we are wired in. Um, I made a few changes. Uh, the old controls right here, file those in their respective places. So the old system, and you know, so I may get some pushback on this, but I made some improvements for a logical reason. The old temperature controllers were controlled by this toggle switch, okay? This is the breaker for the condenser fan motors. The toggle switch runs all the way over and gets power from these fuses right here, or it's fused by those funky looking fuses, okay? Those aren't something I stock very commonly. Um, actually, I don't stock them. I would have to probably go to an electrical supply house to get that style. But anyways, uh, you can see the red wires coming over here, going to that toggle switch. Um, I'm actually gonna remove them, but I wanted you guys to see. I took the toggle switch out of play and actually powered each temperature controller from this circuit breaker. Now, I realize I'm adding load to this circuit breaker. Uh, each one of these controls is not even probably gonna run an amp, okay? So I'm gonna double check it to make sure. But the reason why I did that is because if something fails and this control shorts, I want this breaker to trip and I don't wanna blow those giant fuses, okay? Plus, these are big fuses and it's gonna take a lot more of a short for those things to blow. Uh, you know, bigger event basically. So by putting it on this breaker that was already existing and removing this toggle switch out of the picture, I don't even understand why this toggle switch was here. Because all that the toggle switch did was disconnect control voltage to the contactors and the temp controls, okay? Now these new temp controls, they're digital, so I had to run a common. So we're powering off of line one and line three of the breaker running through the coils and everything. Uh, the sensors are mounted right here. Okay, I tried to do them individually so one person can change the sensors individually. And they're coming down here, going right to there. And I have a connector right here, so we should be good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna power this guy up. Now, before I power it up, I'm gonna turn everything off in the rack because I don't want anything to turn on, that on. And uh, I'm gonna remove that toggle switch out of the picture really quick. And then once I get that out of the picture, then we'll power the thing back up. All right, everything is powered off. We're gonna go ahead and power this guy on. Uh, this one has a switch holder thing on the outside, so you're gonna have to use channel locks to get it to turn on for the time being. Okay, we're powered on. And then uh, once we turn this breaker on, we should power on our uh, temperature controllers and hope nothing blows up. Okay, we're powered on now. So, only one condenser fan motor is running at the moment. Okay, we're gonna have to do some programming because we're gonna take out the short cycle delay. Um, we're reading pretty accurate. My thermometer says 98 degrees, theirs says 95, so pretty accurate. Um, so I gotta do some programming now, but nothing blew up, so that's a plus. All right, we are operating. So, what we have here is a thermostat. This one right here is reading 95 degrees. They're both reading 95. I'm actually sensing 97. I'm good with that, it's close enough. I'm not, don't need to be crazy with these things. Um, these are really easy in that uh, you basically tell it when to turn off the condenser fan motors and when to turn on. So I have a five degree differential. So on at 90, off at 85. And on this one, off at 80, on at 85, okay? Um, the other thing I did was the SF. That's in case the sensor fails, it'll turn the condenser fan motors on. I do like that about these pen controls or Johnson A421s, is you can set that up. So I have it set up to, if the sensor fails, it automatically turns on the condenser fan motors. And I think that's a really good thing that they do. The next thing uh, was I turned off the anti-short cycle delay. So there's no delay. So basically five degree differential turns on the condenser fan motors. Everything's wired in nice and clean, disconnected all the other wires. We're not over amping whatsoever. Seven amps, it's a 20 amp breaker. So adding these, I think I checked it. I think it's like half an amp for each one of those controls or something. So no problems whatsoever with that. So I think we're good. We're gonna put this thing back together and then uh, go downstairs and check on the ice machine again. Even when it's damn near 100 degrees outside, on startup, this machine isn't pushing 300. See, that's why I was, I was a little bit taken back when I first started it earlier. 
Um, but the machine's running now. I'm just timing the cycle. Gonna watch it make another batch of ice. It's made quite a few batches down in there while I was uh, going to get the parts and everything. So I'm pretty confident we're gonna be good. But like I said, I'm gonna watch one more batch. And she is harvesting now. Just started. Get a nice amount of ice out of this thing. And the customer's gonna be happy. So I'm just gonna tell them to keep an eye on it. Understanding the sequence of operation is really important. Also, giving the customer a disclaimer that, hey, you know, this is the only things I could find at this time. You're going to have to keep an eye on it. There may be other things going on. Who knows? OK, when I walked up that morning, there was a cook, you know, scrubbing down the machine and he had that power switch off. And I walked up after he was done. I flipped the power switch and it made a batch of ice. And I'm like, hey, what's going on here? OK, um, so my instinct, you know, right when it happened, it was like, Hey, he just left the switch off or something like that. Okay. But no, you know, I had to look past that. So I went and started talking to the managers. Was anybody here yesterday? Did they see, you know, did they hear the machine running questions like that is what I asked him. And, and the one that I spoke to, she said, yeah, she goes, I could hear it running, but it just wasn't doing anything. Like she goes, there would just never be any ice. Now, another thing too, when customers complain that their machines are completely out of ice, especially when they have two machines, it doesn't necessarily mean that both machines are down. Oftentimes what can happen, especially on Hoshizaki ice machines, because they have a long freeze cycle, okay? So in the middle of the summer when it's 110 degrees outside, a Hoshizaki ice machine can take up to 45 minutes to harvest a single batch of ice. Typically on the smaller machines, the medium size, like the 1,600 pound machines, you're only going to get like 28 pounds of ice out of each batch, okay? And if they're super busy and coming over and filling up all their ice baths, they can burn through that and they wouldn't even know that they had one machine working. So that's a common complaint that I get. Both my ice machines are down. I have no ice. And then you get there and it's like, no, you are just down one machine. The other one just can't keep up. OK, so that's something to remember. But, um, you know, just being able to go through everything and walk through the manager asking them questions like, hey, did you hear a noise coming out of the machine? Yes, I did. Did you see water coming out of the drain pipe? Uh, no, I don't think so. Was there water pouring in the bin? No, because I was trying to investigate everything. OK, thinking of the, the common problems that Hoshizaki ice machines have. Um, once I kind of narrowed that down, I kind of thought, OK, you know what? I don't think this is a simple power switch issue. We need to look further. So after that first batch of ice, put my service gauges on it and that 300 PSI head pressure just kind of caught me off guard. It wasn't horrible, but it was just like, oh, okay. And the temperature outside rose really fast too. Um, when I got there, it was like in the seventies. And by the time I got to the video clip, it was almost 90 already. Um, it's been happening out in the desert like that real quick. So we have cool evenings, really hot days, but anyways, that can also lead to some other problems too, but we'll get into that. So, um, the next step is, okay, let me think about this. Is there any safety limits? Okay, the Hoshizaki ice machines, you'll get a three beep safety limit. Um, there's a couple other ones too that happen. But when that happens, the machine locks itself out and it keeps beeping until someone physically goes and resets the safety limit. That was not the case. Nobody had gotten into the machine. It did not have to be reset. So I had to think, whatever's going on with this machine has to be something that won't cause a safety limit to uh, manually lock the machine out. Important keyword right there, okay? And uh, so then I start thinking, okay, uh, it could be a water float issue. You know, the machine will never go into a freeze cycle if it doesn't ever get water. So I checked the water fill. It was filling fast enough. It filled up the sump. If you want to check the water fill, drain the sump completely, turn on the water inlet valve, and time how long it takes to fill up the sump. If you can find out what size sump you have, then you can figure out the GPM of flow rate that's coming into that machine, okay? Um, now, I kind of ruled out a water-related issue. So then I started thinking, huh, and I saw that higher than normal head pressure, and I said, you know what? Condenser issue, because... A high pressure safety doesn't lock out the machine, but it'll turn it off and then turn it back on when the pressure resets. It basically interrupts power to the machine, just like a bin thermostat. Now, a bin thermostat is another thing that would cause an issue. If the bin thermostat was broken, it wouldn't let the machine come on, okay? So I was kind of ruled down the issues to a bin thermostat, someone leaving the power switch off, or a high pressure issue. And when I saw the higher than normal head pressure and investigated on the roof, that's when I found the condenser fan motor stuff. Now, again, disclaimer, I told the customer, look, um, I don't know if this is the only problem, but this is what I found. Okay. And that's the way that I approach my service calls. I'm not always perfect. Um, you know, the customer hasn't called me back yet, but I mean, sometimes stuff happens. Okay. Sometimes there's something going on that I can't see at the moment. 
In this case, I think I was pretty dead on with the condenser fan motor issue. Um, yeah, and that's it. I really, really appreciate you guys making it to the end of the video. Uh, if you uh, are inclined to do so, please consider supporting the channel. Uh, you can purchase tools through truetechtools.com. You can use my offer code big picture one word. Uh, and if you guys know what kind of tools you're going to purchase, do me a favor, shoot me over an email and I'll generate an affiliate link. Um, you'll still get the 8% off when you enter the offer code, but it helps me a bit more. Okay. Um, you can also uh, become a Patreon patron. Okay. Uh, you can become a YouTube channel member. Um, you know, you can go to my website, hvacrvideos.com. I got merch available, hats and shirts. Uh, any of it just helps to support this whole thing that I got going on. Okay. But if not, no worries. I'm going to keep on making the videos. Okay. I really, really appreciate you guys. Monday evenings, 5 PM Pacific time. I go live on YouTube work permitting and talk about these videos, answer live questions. Also, uh, tentatively go live Friday evenings, uh, with the HVAC overtime crew on the HVAC Overtime YouTube channel. Go give that YouTube channel a subscription. And that's it. I really appreciate it. And we will catch you guys on the next one, okay?